<laughs> well, thanks very much, and uh, appreciate the opportunity to share some thoughts. Um, I'm reminded, uh, um, and I appreciate the, uh, those of you who have stayed to the, to the bitter end here. Um, I'm reminded that um, the literature on this topic is, is limited and though growing, uh, all of us are basically repackaging the extant literature to, to meet the uh, uh, direction we have for our talk. So uh, as most of my thunder has been stolen, um, I'm going to retroactively uh, swipe other people's thunder along the way here. So uh, my charge was to talk about uh, um, post-myotomy problems, and um, uh, my disclosures have no bearing on this presentation. So I was going to talk very briefly about background baseline data, which again you have uh, had presented to you, and I'll probably repackage it in a slightly different way. Uh, talk about recurrent dysphagia after myotomy, however that myotomy was performed, and then what to do with reflux after myotomy, however that myotomy has been performed. Again, appreciating that uh, there's been good discussion on this topic already, and then a few recommendations. So uh, you've seen, um, obviously, that there's two options here, um, <clears throat> uh, and uh, won't dwell on either of these. The purpose of the myotomy is obviously to destroy contractility, and as we've uh, mentioned, many speakers have mentioned, uh, there's no uh, delusion about any kind of hope of return to normal function after this. Um, and uh, again, large initial series have come out talking about uh, the benefits of the, uh, the surgical, the laparoscopic approach. Uh, many years uh, um, uh, have been in the literature, and uh, uh, further to that, more recent collected series, such as the one uh, from Marco uh, Patti shop, which has already been uh, referenced, showing that not only the initial big series showing the uh, efficacy of, um, anti, uh, of uh, laparoscopic myotomy, uh, but that this actually endures uh, at a very uh, great success rate from five uh, to ten years and beyond. So again, background that I know you've already heard uh, uh, this afternoon. Uh, so it is the case with POEM, Harry Inouye's um, uh, very important initial series showing that this was a feasible and reproducible uh, procedure, uh, followed up by a recent collected series of uh, poems um, uh, with not dissimilar uh, success rates with regard to dysphagia, uh, but obviously much uh, shorter follow-up, all, uh, all in the order of about two years and certainly less than, than three years. So uh, impressive initial reports, uh, encouraging uh, collected series on both <clears throat> main approaches uh, to myotomy. So uh, why do they fail? <coughs> Excuse me. They um, uh, largely do so because of an inadequate uh, myotomy, uh, so technical error has to be uh, described that way, uh, fundoplication failure, uh, fibrosis, and mucosal stricture. Um, so uh, what are the options then uh, following uh, lap heller? And again, uh, uh, this is, I'm, I'm uh, presenting to you a literature that's been presented in different ways already. Uh, but the options are essentially are pneumatic dilatation uh, following a, a myotomy, a redo myotomy, uh, either endoscopically or surgically, and then uh, finally uh, end stage uh, esophagectomy. Um, so balloon dilatations uh, are in some ways the easiest things to do, uh, but far from optimal and, and obviously uh, aimed at patients uh, uh, where the least morbidity uh, is, uh, of intervention is the name of the game. Uh, they tend to have to be repeated frequently. Uh, you've got to wait at least three months uh, post myotomy to safely do anomatic dilatation. And with things like fibrosis and mucosal uh, stricture, uh, uh, a very um, fraught, potentially very fraught procedure with the balloon. So what about POEM uh, following uh, LAP uh, Heller? Uh, again, in a recently um, collected uh, uh, series, <clears throat> not large numbers, only 51 patients, and that's from 13 centers, as you can see here. In the short term, uh, very encouraging uh, um, success rates in terms of symptomatic improvement. Uh, still don't know what the long-term follow-up, but really encouraging uh, early data to suggest uh, the role of, of rescue POEM following a failed uh, lap myotomy. 
So what about failed poems and how, how well do redo poems uh, function in that, in that setting? Again, uh, recent, um, uh, lar recent series, not many patients, and interestingly, or, or perhaps not too surprisingly, redo uh, poems don't fare quite as well as poems post uh, Heller myotomy in terms of peri-procedural morbidity, and we still don't know uh, what the long-term um, uh, outcomes are, what kind of sustained improvements we can see. Um, <clears throat> and so we talked about poems after uh, Heller's, uh, poems after poems. What about uh, redo um, myotomies, surgical myotomies after failed surgical myotomies? Uh, this is a series that uh, Dan uh, Smith recently published, uh, 58 patients, four patients initially, and you can see uh, 46 of them <clears throat> were after a primary failure and then down 10 and, and two after two and three uh, cracks at it. Four patients went straight to esophagectomy, three all other others ultimately went to, but this is interesting, um, <clears throat> at an almost three year follow up, um, recurrent dysphagia after re-intervention was 28% when the, the root cause was uh, inadequate myotomy. So then only a 70% success rate uh, with uh, re-surgical myotomy after failed myotomy. Uh, 63% failure if the uh, underlying uh, cause of the recurrent dysphagia uh, was significant fi fibrosis and 100% uh, failure in this uh, series if the underlying uh, etiology of failure of the initial myotomy uh, was mucosal stricture. So uh, has a role to play uh, when an inadequate myotomy was performed in the, uh, uh, the, the uh, primary procedure. <clears throat> So then, as one of the questions already uh, raised, what's the role of esophagectomy? Uh, the, the greatest experience with this by far comes from South America and not our own experience here in North America or even in Western Europe. It's a different disease and uh, mega esophagus as described in, in uh, Chile is a far cry from what we often refer to as mega esophagus here. Uh, but but uh, what this uh, uh, series shows that in uh, expert hands and in, in, in expert and focused centers, uh, it's still uh, a morbid procedure, uh, but uh, can have uh, can be can be shown to have good uh, long reasonably long term outcomes. So uh, to summarize, then. Um, uh, what, what an approach to uh, post uh, myotomy uh, failure uh, or recurrent dysphagia might be uh, suggested uh, um <clears throat> Uh, obviously, sorting out the etiology of, of the recurrent dysphagia is important. If the initial myotomy occurred less than three months ago, then you're, you're, uh, the patient's not a candidate for pneumatic dilatation, and actually a, a surgical reintervention um, or even a poem would be more indicated. Uh, and then you can see if uh, pneumatic dilatation fails, which over time it inevitably will. Uh, you can go the poem route or the surgical myotomy route, and if those fail, uh, happily in a a fairly uh, rare, um, uh, uh, limited rate um, of failure, uh, then esophagectomy has to be considered. Um, so uh, what then about uh, reflux after myotomy? Um, Having discussed uh, dysphagia, what about reflux? Well, a lot of discussion about this and a lot of controversy, but I will say that on balance, my, uh, my view is, and I think the, the evidence supports this, that the use of a, a hemi, uh, anterior hemifundoplasty with um, uh, a, a surgical myotomy um, uh, um, is the preferred method to minimize reflux post procedurally, post myotomy. Now, notwithstanding recent papers by the Anvari group and uh, Mike uh, Holtzman and others from Vandy, where they've looked at their long-term follow-up, having done initial, the, the very well-known initial uh, randomized controlled trial that came out of Vandy uh, more than 10 years ago, uh, looking at the role of door versus no door in lap hellers, and then uh, Mike uh, pulled that series together, a small group of remnant patients, as did Marin up in Hamilton. Um, but whereas the initial studies, I'll just point out the initial studies for both of those uh, groups involved uh, pH uh, measure the follow-up studies for both groups uh, were just uh, patient surveys, and, and as we'll see in a sec, there's often a disconnect between perception of reflux and actual reflux between these, these two approaches. Uh, but both of these studies would suggest that there's not much difference between either group long-term, whether or not they had a hemifundoplasty or not. So uh, again, referring to the PADI study, and this has been presented by a couple of the speakers already, it's interesting when you look at uh, reflux post-myotomy, 
And when you simply look at symptoms, you see that Heller's and Poems uh, line up about the same in terms of patient perception of reflux postmyotomy. When you look at uh, endoscopic evidence of reflux, um, the Heller group, it's only 11.5 collected uh, percent from across the studies. Poem, it's double that. And then when you look at pH, um, uh, measurement of pH, there's a four-fold uh, increased difference in, in reflux with the Poem patients versus the uh, reflux patients, which um, it's an in, uh, incontrovertible difference between the two. The interesting thing is there is, is arguably an over-perception of reflux uh, initially among the Heller patients and an under-perception of reflux among the POEM patients, which I'm not entirely clear on. So uh, what to do after this is I just wind up the last few minutes. Um, uh, there's no question uh, uh, that, um, and we heard some discussion from the prior panelists about the use of PPIs routinely, selectively in uh, POEM patients. Uh, they, they do very well uh, with PPIs if you're going to use them. Uh, what about, um, oh, and sorry, the other thing too is uh, considering obviously the, uh, uh, the role of going back and doing a fundoplasty uh, uh, following a, a POEM patient. Uh, what about uh, with uh, patients who've had a, a surgical myotomy and they've had a, a hemifundoplasty of sorts? Uh, one of the important things to, is to sort out um, is what's the actual reason for the, the symptoms. Is it reflux or is it pseudo reflux, an issue of delayed esophageal clearance, food stasis, fermentation, et cetera? Um, the, um, uh, response rate to PPIs is more varied in this patient population, but uh, getting good uh, data is absolutely key, understanding um, endoscopically and physiologically what's going on in the esophagus. Uh, and then finally, as was discussed with the prior uh, talk, there, there is a role uh, in which patients, it's hard to uh, say at this point, of, um, of uh, essentially a, um, a RUI uh, gastrojejunostomy. So uh, galloping through this topic then, as all the speakers have mentioned, we have to remember that achalasia is, uh, we palliate it, we don't affect a cure when we treat achalasia patients. Happily, uh, most patients respond very well to either a, a surgical a myotomy or an endoscopic myotomy with good resolution of symptoms and minimal or manageable reflux. So the good news is that most patients really do very well with this. Uh, we do need, with regard to dysphagia, a stepwise uh, 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 approach and uh, rescue poem really uh, seems to work very well. Uh, and uh, end-stage achalasia is, is, again, happily a, a rare instance that we have to deal with in the West. Uh, but if esophagectomy is needed um, in expert hands, in expert centers, these patients can do well. Um, <clears throat> and uh, um, I think that we should, and we may, there may be some discussion now whether we are compelled to tell our patients uh, undergoing POEM that they can expect a higher rate of reflux than Heller, or we don't believe that's a, a decided issue yet. Um, uh, and uh, happily, once again, uh, post-myotomy reflux patients are usually managed uh, very effectively um, uh, with PPIs. Thank you for your attention.